Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the Early Childhood Community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. And we're thrilled to have with us today um, Lori Brueger, who's the project uh, coordinator for the Rochester Early Childhood Assessment Program Partnership, um, also mm -hmm. called RECAP. And yeah. thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Also the parent of two young children. Yes. And we're also fortunate to have uh, Amy Rist with us. And Amy is also the parent of, uh, of a daughter who's going to be three this week and, um, and a five-year-old son. Right. right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us You're as well. Welcome. Thank you. We're talking three-year-olds, we're talking behavior, discipline, that whole area that every parent and uh, anyone who's parented is like, it's an issue for them. So yeah. um, how about three-year-olds? Let's talk three-year-olds uh, in general. Three-year-olds, it's, <laughs> it's endless and it's mm -hmm. ongoing, especially discipline, which is always um, a very um, intense topic for many people. Mm -hmm. And it's something that as parents we face on a daily basis. It's a constant thing for us. Yeah. Um, Three-year-olds, I, I feel that often get grouped into, I was saying earlier, a preschool age group. Mm -hmm. However, I think that often they are between stages where on a given day they may show behavior similar to a two-year-old's, but then on another day they, they might be more mature and exhibit some behaviors of four-year-olds. It's confusing yeah. to parents, I would say? I think it can be confusing because mm -hmm. expectations are a very important piece uh, for the parent um, what you bring as a parent to the discipline dynamic and mm -hmm. having an appropriate level of expectation of the child is very, very important. And I think a three-year-old um, shifts that often for us. Mm -hmm. um, and you might be uh, used to functioning at a certain level and then they may change their behavior. Mm -hmm. They may become maybe more clingy and need you. Mm -hmm. um, and then next, they're very autonomous and they're asserting that independence and that autonomy and breaking away from you and saying more of the no's that we all hear. Um, by autonomy, you mean trying to get away and be in their own? Autonomy. Yes, their independence. Mm -hmm. they're in, in a sense, it's a separation from the parent. Mm -hmm. Because with infants and toddlers, of course, they're very, even physically, they're, they're closer to you and they're mm -hmm. um, emotionally very reliant on you. And as they get older, they want to do more things for themselves mm -hmm. and, and make their own choices and decisions. Yeah. And often that means saying no to mom <laughs> or dad or their caregiver. Yeah. I'm finding that with my 16-year-old right now. So, yeah. are you finding this, Amy? Now, your your daughter's gonna she's going to be three, so she's still two as the, as she we're is. taping and today. As Lori was saying, um, you know, it, for us it's confusing. Their behavior is confusing, but I think it's confusing to them. You know, yeah. one minute they're they're wanting to do their own thing, but the next minute, oh, I don't want to do that. I want somebody to do it for me. Yeah. So I think it's a struggle on their level and ours. Yeah. So they can, at one point, want to get out on their own, and at another exactly. point, they're happy to just cuddle right up. That's and, it. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's hard to know. It's hard to know when to back off and, and let them do their own thing and make their own decision. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's hard to know. You know, it's kind of a weird way to look at things, but with with early childhood, in my mind and in the way that I think about things. It's almost like for me, children are just very slowly awakening to life, you know, and that it takes them three or four years because I don't have a memory from age three. I mean, I, I can't recall anything. Some, I have some vague dreamlike things around age four, but nothing for three. So it was strange for me when my kids were three to think they're probably not consciously remembering any of this that's going on. I mean, subconsciously, yes. they're remembering everything probably. Mm -hmm. But um, so it just seemed like a, a, kind of a weird stage, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. I think it's important, though. I think it's very helpful to be conscious of their perspective. Mm -hmm. Even though they might not have long-term memory of it, they certainly have short-term memory, and they, <laughs> they pull from their experiences. Mm -hmm. And through the parents as the sounding board, they're gaining information, they're making sense of the, word, of the world, mm -hmm. and um, figuring all of that out and sensing it from you. So as you said, it's not a conscious memory, but mm -hmm. all of it is becoming part of them and their whole basis for um, later years, mm -hmm. so these are important things that happen, and, and, and even though on a daily basis they might not remember it, yeah. I, I agree with you very yeah. strongly that it, the, the, the layers. <laughs> right, layers. Yeah. Way. yeah. The research is suggesting that it's, um, you know, that we're kind of front end loaded, and those early experiences are just really important. So what happens at three is really, it's an important time, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Does it, do you sense that, Amy, as a parent? This is an important time for my daughter? It's a huge time. and. Um, just looking at her, you know, in the last three years, all the things she has really 
done. It's amazing. You know, just turning into this wonderful little person. Mm -hmm. You know, every day she displays herself more and more, whether it's independence or her speech or mm -hmm. her physical ability to run and jump and climb on the coffee table. And, <laughs> Mom you know, says happily. Exactly, exactly. It, it's, it's an amazing time. It's a wonderful time. And not only is she getting ready for preschool, um, you know, and are we getting ready for her to have a great summer because she's going to be able to push herself on the swing more and tackle that slide. But it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just the awakening of such a wonderful world for them. It's, it's a neat thing. Yeah. It really is. So what are some developmentally appropriate things that parents should look for in three-year-olds? Um. Uh, well, I think that, um, that those, those milestones, that you have physical development and more things that they're able to do. Mm -hmm. But I think for three-year-olds, too, more and more making choices and having control over aspects of their lives is a very important piece, mm -hmm. especially as it pertains to discipline and, and behavior, uh, managing their behavior on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important for us as parents to remember that as much, uh, as much opportunity we give them to make choices for themselves. Uh, and we can do that in a way that uh, is manageable for us. Uh, and it's important when you offer a choice to a child that it's a choice you can live with. Uh, because we don't want to revoke what they've chosen after you've offered this opportunity to choose and mm -hmm. then say, well, you, that, we can't do that. Um, so maybe offer a couple of uh, things. You can play with this or this right now, but mm -hmm. not the rake because it wouldn't be safe for mm -hmm. you. It has pointy sides. But let's go find one of your plastic rakes mm -hmm. and a shovel, and we'll go in the sandbox together. So what I'm hearing is as a strategy, mm -hmm. you select a couple of choices, mm -hmm. ones that you can live with. Yes, that's very important. You <laughs> offer them the choices, yeah. right? Yeah. And then that gives them a sense of control. Yes. That they're getting to pick one of the two. Yes. Um, there's a whole, the whole framework that we were talking about that they're sensing their world and all of those limits in their lives. But they also need to feel empowered and they need to feel that sense of security for themselves and that they're able to make decisions and have control over their lives. That's a very empowering thing and it's, mm -hmm. it's important to all of us as people. It strikes me though, it's a really tough balancing act to do. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. It, for me personally, I've had a, a, a particular challenge because I was saying to you uh, earlier that young children have been my work for many, many years. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, uh, I can tell you that it's a totally different dynamic when you're in your own nest and you're in, within your own bubble at home and mm -hmm. you have different emotions and the family dynamic happening and all of that. Um, and that keeping that objectivity is, is very challenging for all of us. Over the last few weeks, you know, we've had a whole variety of pediatricians and early childhood specialists on, and mm -hmm. that does seem to be um, a common theme. And I think reassuring, I'm hoping reassuring to parents at home that mm -hmm. the experts, once they're home and they're actually dealing with their yeah. babies, face the same problems That's that everybody right. else does. That's right. And so, um, but also something else that I'm reading into what you're saying is that if a three-year-old is exploring, mm -hmm. which is what a three-year-old does, yeah that it isn't that they're trying to be bad. It's right. they're just doing their job. Yes, they're so. doing what they're naturally mm -hmm. going to do. It's natural and it's something to be applauded and more ways that we can step back and be objective from it and take a 10 second break to breathe mm -hmm. and look at it and say, geez, you know, it wasn't what I planned for, but look at him go or look at her go. Yeah. She's really into that and, and separating ourselves yeah. from it just a little bit emotionally and recognizing the moment yeah. and how important it was um, for them to, mm -hmm. to see that to the end. Even though it wasn't your plan for the next 20 minutes, they really needed yeah. to do it. And, and you're suggesting it. expectations that parents have. Yes. Like, like now, do you have expectations of your, of your three-year-old? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for example. Oh, um, my expectations are that I would love to have a clean home and I would love for her room to be kept and I would love for her to behave, but come on, <laughs> who am I kidding? Yeah. So I just, you know, I, as long as it's a safe environment and as long as things aren't too wild, because, you know, I can sit here and say, in a perfect world, it would be wonderful if she would do this, this, and this. If one of those eight things I have on my mind happens, it's mm -hmm. a good day, it's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. So as a parent, doing what you say and allowing them to go within their boundaries of growing and, mm -hmm. and exploring and making choices, but still keeping sane as a parent so that I'm offering her, and my son for that matter, when he was that age and even now, um, offering them 
the boundaries to work so that they can make their choices and do their things. It's that's a struggle that I do as a parent every day. You know, I know what I want to happen, but it's not going to happen like yeah, that. So yeah. relax and and just make it livable for yeah. everybody to to be able to work within the same space. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So expectations. What um, I know that for me with my with my kids that. I wasn't quite sure what I should expect from certain ages. You know, like how do you how do you find out what's what's right? People probably rely on the way that they were parented. I mean, that's pretty true, isn't it? That yeah, I, I think so. I think that is going to be our our first point of reference. It's the first thing that we have as mm -hmm. human beings. We all have gone through that, and we have uh, what we recall from how we were raised. But uh, I feel I I strongly believe that it's important as a parent to be conscious of that yet also be conscious of how am I going to parent. Mm -hmm. And if you have a partner in your parenting, how are we going to parent? We need to make some conscious decisions together and to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And to put that on the table very early because I think for many uh, parents find that they might not even be aware that they have a different set of expectations for mm -hmm. children. Yep. Um, and, and it's important to to talk about that and to make a conscious decision of how we are going to go about this. What's important in our family? You've just raised a huge issue. <laughs> Seriously, because yeah, uh, yeah. now I teach communication skills for couples, you know, and for relationship building skills up at, uh, at MCC. And the idea of expectations in a relationship with anyone, you know, people enter into a relationship and if they have very different expectations about what's to come out of that relationship yeah. or what they want out of the relationship, that relationship can be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So what you're suggesting is that a mom and dad um, work together and be clear about what their expectations for yes. the child are and their, their parenting styles. Yes. But isn't it difficult sometimes to even find out what your parenting style is? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. How, do you, how, it is. how do you do go about um, that? I, I tend to be a sponge mentality when I years ago I, I would just I read as much as I can mm -hmm. I love talking to other parents I, I so enjoy talking to Amy and sharing mm -hmm. experience I think that is a very valuable piece mm -hmm. of parenthood yeah as many to I refer to them as your tool belt as many tools as you can get into your tool belt mm -hmm. the better yeah. because then you're even just more and more you're you're equipped yeah. you have many more things to work with on a daily basis mm -hmm. so it's it's almost like getting your repertoire or your uh, the number of songs that you know yeah. or the number of methods to work with mm -hmm. with children so mm -hmm. for example one one example of a parenting style and we have a whole show coming up on this but spanking mm -hmm. is a way to mm -hmm. discipline in that and there's very different cultural expectations mm -hmm. and and you could if two parents had different ideas about spanking, that can cause a real problem, can mm -hmm. it? So, I mean, the, the whole idea of communicating yes. your expectations, which you had suggested, is really a big, yes. a big, big issue. Yes. As parents prepare to be parents, mm -hmm. that may be the first step, huh? Mm -hmm. what, what do we have in common? And even to work your way through what, do, um, what you want to do. So, um, we're going to take a break in just a minute here, and I just want to uh, kind of summarize it that uh, um, as a three year old, exploring is normal. Right? And yes. that, that's their job. It is. And it isn't that they're bad children as they take mashed potatoes and throw them on the wall and stuff. <laughs> that's what's expected. Yes. Um, but actually finding out your own expectations. Yes. About that. That's a very big piece of it. Yeah. It's important as the adult to get in check yeah. in a sense and be aware of your own feelings about the whole relationship of discipline. Yeah. Because it's a, a constant thing in the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that your suggestion, you said you enjoy going to Amy to help you sort yeah. out your own. Oh, I love talking to other people. Uh, <laughs> Amy the, has a great philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that helps you. That helps you sort out. So a lot of times it may be just flushing out so that you're in touch with what yes. it is that you want to. I think the support is very, very important. Yeah. Having support through other adults yeah. and sharing experiences because sometimes it can feel very isolating. Mm -hmm. We're all in our own houses. Oh, yeah. We're all yeah. going from cars to work to mm -hmm. all the demands in our own small circles. But the more you can branch out and having a resource like this is mm -hmm. very valuable because uh, hearing more and more ideas from other yeah. people. Mm. It's great. Hello everyone, welcome back to Parent Talk. I'm Jim Coffey and today we're talking about ain't misbehaving with three-year-olds and uh, the whole issue of discipline and uh, um, what's ex expected of three-year-olds and what's normal. We have two wonderful guests today, Lori Brueger, who's the uh, project coordinator for the Rochester Early Childhood Assessment Partnership, RECAP, and also Amy Rist, a parent of a three-year-old, just about to be a three-year-old, and a five-year-old. And we're just going right into this whole issue of, uh, of three-year-olds and what's to be expected in discipline. 
And just before break, we left off talking about expectations and that. It strikes me that expectations would be tied into um, the way you were parented, your own experience as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember this story. Um, husband and wife. The woman, the woman always cut off the end of a ham and she'd bake the ham and did this three or four times. They had been married just shortly and he said, honey, how come you always cut the end of the ham off? She says, I don't know. My mother always used to. And so they asked the mom, apparently a true story. They asked the mom and she says, I don't know. My mom used to do it. And they asked her <laughs> and they traced it back to the 1840s where the great, great grandmother, and they found it in her diary, had cut it off simply because her pan was too small. <laughs> Right, yeah. but but it's an example of a behavior that gets handed down, and parenting is yeah, like that. Yes. You know, whether you spank your child or how you punish and how you try to control children, parenting styles and strategies are handed down. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, I I don't know if you experienced that, but I think many people will say that words erupt out of your mouth <laughs> that you heard from your parents. Yes, yes. Uh, and <laughs> it just yeah. sounds so familiar. Yes. Um, as much for myself personally that uh, I've worked and studied and, and always striving uh, for it, these things are part of me and they come out and I think that something uh, as an individual to affirm and say, mm -hmm. okay, this was my experience, this was my life, this was my family, yeah. uh, but then I still feel that I want to be conscious of what is my choice and what yeah. do I want for the relationship with my children, what types of things do I want to what messages do I want to send to them? What mm -hmm. do I feel is important? Mm -hmm. And yeah. how do I want them to come out of this? Mm -hmm. I want them to feel good. Uh, and I think that's something important in the classroom too when teachers are working uh, with children. That, mm -hmm. that I think you talk to any early childhood teacher and they will tell you that the self-esteem and the social emotional aspects of a young child's development is, is very, very important. Yeah. Maybe the most important? It is. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. academics, the learning, that comes with it too. It yeah. comes naturally and children do it at all, at all different paces just like they do with their social and their emotional self. Yeah. Children do not do everything the same. And we as parents do not do everything the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember um, I mentioned to you that I started off as a kindergarten teacher many years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember the very first day there was a little guy, and I won't say his name, um, <laughs> but he just was going around, he's picking the girl's skirts up, you know. And I just went, young man. <laughs> and that finger, that tone of voice, and even the words, young man, yeah. that's my dad. Yeah. You know, and so immediately, especially with discipline, yes. what was coming out of me wasn't, um, I wasn't thinking of it ahead of time. Yes. You know, it was just a, a reaction, kind of. Yes. And uh, it's one way to, for parents to come in touch with Mm -hmm. Their parenting style is to recognize yes. maybe what comes out, what they're doing automatically. Mm -hmm. Is that a yeah? There was something I actually uh, wrote as I was preparing for today. The the difference between reacting and acting. Mm -hmm. a reacting is more of your it's a knee jerk, a knee jerk reaction, and you just it's not as thoughtful. Mm -hmm. But for a parent being more thoughtful, taking a minute to reflect and say, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. um, and again, in a perfect world, it's not something that we're able to do constantly. Yeah. But the more we're striving for it, the better. To, to be thoughtful in the process, to stop and think for a minute. Collect yourself. <laughs> what I'm getting from you is that um, you'd have to actually be aware of it. It is like an awareness. How, so to develop awareness. Mm -hmm. Now you had talked about speaking with Amy about um, mm -hmm. the things that you do and actually just discussing issues. Yes. That would help awareness, I would think. Mm -hmm. Do you find that too, Amy, that you're... Uh, I do. I, I'm. Like Lori, um, when I first found out I was pregnant, I got all the books and I read all of the things because, you know, it's a, it's a place to start. Yeah. Um, and even now with the kids in their different stages, sure, I'll check with the pediatrician and, yes, I'll talk with a teacher or, or whatnot, but I really find that talking with my friends, other moms, people mm -hmm. who are in the same boat, I can pick and choose from their experiences and, and the different things that those folks have done and what have worked for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and their children, it's a great sounding board, yeah. you know, and of course all of the things that you've learned um, from being a child and, and then from parenting uh, yourself, I mean, that's huge, but it, just talking with people in your own boat, I think that is the best yeah. resource. Yeah. I think it's the best resource. It's certainly the teachable moment, isn't it? When, yes. Because people are very interested because they, they've got, got the it. children there. You know, one of the parenting, because to be aware of things and then make choices about whether you want to change your parenting style. Like if something might have happened to you as a child or your parents might have been one way and you went, uh, that's not right. the way I want to do it so I'm right. going to make a change. Just as a male growing up in this culture, um, what I was inundated with the message was that I should provide and protect so that my wife can raise the children. My father was not involved with us and so for many men I think 
even being involved in the children's development as a parent um, is sometimes discouraged, unfortunately, I think. You know, it certainly was in my case. And I had to change that because I wanted to be involved with my kids' lives, you know, and I'm thrilled that I was able to be. Um, how about discipline then? You know, we're, we're dealing with this whole thing. Any approaches to discipline? Mm -hmm. I think what's often helpful uh, with children at, who are three who, and who are still often uh, two-year-olds in their behavior, redirecting is often a, a very helpful method. Um, but I think what's also helpful is to let the child make a choice for an appropriate uh, behavior mm -hmm. and to, to help them to understand what's appropriate. Or, um, for example, if you have children playing in a block area together or siblings who are fighting over a toy, and the impulse is there sometimes to hit rather than using words mm -hmm. and talking about it, saying, well, geez, I don't really care for that, that you're taking my toy. No, they're going to say, I, you know, boom, and someone's going to get hit. Uh, for a parent to step in and say, I know you're upset that your sister took your block, but let's talk with her. We have a problem here. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And depending on the child's ability to take that in, you have to to gauge that as a parent at that particular time. They might be too upset to sit down and, and have a talk about it. They might need to just step away. Well, come on over here. Maybe let's get a drink of water. Let's collect ourselves and mm -hmm. think for a minute. Mm -hmm. and, and then for parents to offer support, would you like me to help you? Let's go and see if we can solve the problem. What was the problem? So that whole thing about getting off to the side, that's what you mean by redirecting? The redirecting, okay. yes. Oftentimes it's, there's the heat of the moment aspect mm -hmm. and to recognize that and for the parent to be able to say, okay, we all need to just maybe just take a minute to mm -hmm. collect ourselves and think and reflect for a little bit. And that gives you as a parent time to gear up okay. and say, okay, let me get myself ready mm -hmm. too. How am I going to handle this particular situation? Yep. And I think it's important for the children to know that I'm not going to let someone uh, I'm not going to let you hurt another child, and nor am I going to let anyone hurt you. Yeah. These are important things for children to know. That particular strategy, then redirecting, you said it gives you a little time to think. That ties to what you said a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. where when you were co uh, comparing or contrasting, um, reacting to acting. Yes. Because if it gives you time to actually think about it, you will mm -hmm. act rather than react. Mm -hmm. The other thing I noticed that you did is you said that I know that you're, um, um, I know that you're upset. So you've mm -hmm. actually recognized the emotions that they have at the time. Yes. And you didn't tell them they shouldn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. Simply recognized it and, and that validates yes. it in, in itself. Yeah, it, it's, in, it's important never to ever blame a child mm -hmm. or accuse them of anything or uh, uh, call them, you know, that was bad or, or yeah. any of these negative labels that I think mm -hmm. um, might be reacted you know, for as a human being, you yeah. know, that, my gosh, you're seeing someone hurt someone. That, mm -hmm. that really pushes an emotional bush button in ourselves. Yeah. Uh, so it's important never to belittle the child or have the child feel bad about themselves because they're learning. They're yeah. learning about the world and about themselves, and they should never feel poorly about themselves. You've just suggested something I think that is an important thing, and you're saying separate the behavior of the child from the value of the child yes. themselves? Yes. So it's the behavior yes. you might not like and not, right. not so much the child. Yeah. We have a caller. Let's try to take that. We've just got a couple minutes left, but um, let's okay. go to Annie on line two. And um, hello, Annie. Hi. Thanks for calling Parent Talk. Sure. What question do you have? I was wondering, what do you do if you have like a three-year-old and they don't want to um, get get ready? You have you have to get to work, and the child is busy playing. Um, what do you do when you're just butting heads with them? Okay. And um, I'll take my my uh, answer off the phone then. Okay. No, we we still have time here, uh, so let's sure? just. Yeah, okay. let's, we'll try to get, we'll get in what we can. Okay. Um, so you're butting heads, you've both got two very different things you want to do at the same time. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's something that comes up often, don't you find, Amy? Every and, day. It, it, yes. uh, and I think, again, it's the parent's role. The parent is the adult and has the ability to be conscious of the, what's happening on a different level. The three-year-old can only see their perspective. They mm -hmm. can't relate to the parent's perspective and the parent's demands and whatever other things are, are, are affecting mm -hmm. that moment. Uh, so as much as the parent can step back and take the few extra minutes to allow the child what they need to do, I think everyone will feel better for it. It's worth the, the little bit of an extra investment mm -hmm. in time and maybe being late and maybe things are going to be a little more complicated. 
but I think in the long run that your, your parenting, you as a parent will feel well, and what's most important is the, the child's integrity and their feeling good about their choice mm -hmm. and what was really, really important to them. And it may seem insignificant, it may seem very small to a parent, but it's, it's big to a child. It's huge. Yeah, and yeah. Those, it's to be respected. Yeah, and yeah. good point, that is they only see that one, that mm -hmm. one perspective. Mm -hmm. Annie, do you want to stay on the line? And we can, we're just about out of time, but if you stay on the line, we can discuss it further. Okay, All right. great. Okay, thanks. thanks. Um, so, final thoughts. Three-year-olds. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think th that their self-esteem and they're feeling good about themselves. If there's any one point that I would like to impart to everybody, mm -hmm. is to keep that always in the front of your mind. Yeah. How do you want your child to feel about this? Yeah. What do you want them to feel in life? Yeah. What's important? Okay. And mm -hmm. it sounds like with some of the suggestions you've made today that that is possible to do, mm -hmm. despite the demands and all the yes. tearing apart that a three-year-old will, will actually right. put on you. Right. Let me thank you both for joining us today, and um, good You're luck welcome. with your children. <laughs> I know you've got your hands full, and in some cases, my kids, because they're teenagers now, I'm. Uh, it seemed like yesterday they were at that age, but uh, boy, did that go fast. <laughs> you know, it was Amazing grace. Baby's brains don't grow by themselves. The sound but when you sing to your baby, talk to like your baby, and play with your baby, I once was his brain cells lost, learn to grow. But now so I'm sing to your baby. I'm Talk to your baby. But now Play I see. with your baby. Mm -hmm. 292 Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of 292 Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort.